G'day everyone, Jason here with a review of some of the Master of the Universe Origin figures. So this is, I think, Series 5, maybe? Uh, they're coming out of order from Big Bad Toy Store, so I've got an earlier series still coming, but this is a later series. So this is Faker, Evil Robot of Skeletor. We have Merman, Ocean Warlord, in his Lord of Power not quite the same as the uh, exclusive, but in the same sort of vein, some different colors. And then we have Evil Lynn in uh, a regular skin tone, or, well, as regular can be for a pale, uh, pasty sort of sorceress. And then we have Fisto, heroic hand-to-hand -hand fighter. So there are the packets. We have a look at the back, so Faker, we have the robotic replica. Faker lures the heroes of Eternia into deadly traps. So there he is, Ram Man and uh, Man at Arm. Ah, uh, sorry, um, Many Faces. And it looks like Prince Adam is about to turn into He Man there on the back. And we've got here, remove chest armor for robotic reveal, twist into powerful battle positions. And then there's the rest of the series there. So that is Faker. And then Merman come around on the back. So we've got as ruler of Rakash, Merman orders the monsters of the deep at the behest of the evil Skeletor. I love that. That's a throwback to the first mini comic of Merman with the uh, with the big tentacled creature from the front cover. And there is blonde Teela on a unicorn. So there we go. That is Merman, uh, fit sword of Rakash in his hand and twist into powerful battle positions. So that is Merman, the Lords of Power, and then Evil Lin, so we'll come on the back. And we've got here, with dark magic at her disposal, Evil Lin's power makes her one of Eternia's greatest threats. So there we have Stinkor, we have the uh, mini-comic uh, Triclops, uh, we have the Lords of Power Merman, and we have Trapjaw. And, uh, and Evil Lynn's giving a, a blast there from her staff. So we've got the fit crystal ball into hand and twist into powerful battle positions. So uh, this is the same figure, I think, as the, uh, the initial Evil Lynn, just doesn't have the yellow skin. And then finally, we have Fisto. You gotta love that beard and mustache. And on the back, we've got the rugged fighter with the metal fist. Fisto uses his incredible strength to protect Eternia's enchanted forest. And then we have Stridor in the background. We've got uh, we've got good old Jitsu uh, or Chopper. And uh, I think there's even Night Stalker right in the background there, just hidden away. Um, so Fisto fits sword in his hand and twist into powerful battle positions. So that is this series. Let's open them up and take a look at them outside of the packet. So first up we have Fisto, and he comes with the little brochure showing all the different parts that can be taken off. So the arms, the head, the waist, the, uh, the legs. Pretty much the same as most of the characters in this series. They can pull apart and you can swap parts. Uh, it comes with a mini comic, so this will be the same mini con comic for all four in the series. Uh, it's only a, a short little mini comic, but I do like the artwork in this one, actually. This is quite quite good. There's a very expressive sort of face. Um, so I'm assuming that'll be Faker taking on Fisto. And then we have his sword. So that is in all in the one color of purple. There's no, the handle's the same color. Um, yeah, so that's just the classic Fisto sword. And then we have Fisto here. So he's rocking the moustache, the beard, and the red hair. He's got his classic armor. So again, that's a solid piece. Uh, he has the big giant silver fist, matches in with the silver on his uh, armor. He's got the silver gauntlet on the other hand, and he's got the purple boots and the brown furry loincloth. So he's got the standard articulation. So we'll just run through that quickly, but all of the figures have the same articulation. So with Fisto, the head is on a ball joint, so it can look both directions. It can look up only a little bit. He can look down a lot more. He's, um, his hair just sort of hits into the back there of the head. 
So, but yeah, good sort of movement. You can like look to the side. Um, you've got a bit of a head wobble you can do there. Um, and then we have full rotation of the arms. And they go up. There is a elbow joint with a swivel. And then the uh, there is a, well, on this hand, there's a, a, a twist at the base of his fist. And then on this hand, there is a twist and rocker there. Um, joints are pretty pretty tight. Um, he has obviously waist articulation. Uh, his legs, a little bit of forward movement, a little bit of back movement. Uh, stands up at full height, can go down into that sort of squat pose of the uh, classic figures, but the uh, they can obviously stand a bit taller. And then he has uh, a twist at the boot, and then rocker at the ankle, and uh, even a little bit of a side rocker as well. So not super articulated, but uh, obviously far more articulated than the figures of our childhood. Um, and then if we bring in the sword, uh, we can let's see if very tight fit there in the hand, but he can hold on to his sword and he's got the, the big powerful fist. So we can get some some cool poses, but that is Fisto. So next up we have Faker. So he comes with the power sword. It's the full power sword in orange. It has a skinny handle, so I don't know how well that will fit into his hand. And then we have Faker here, which is obviously just a recolor of He-Man. So the skin is in the Gar blue. Uh, and then he has the dark sort of orangey, gingery red hair. And he has the Skeletor chest armor in orange. Uh, he's got the black wristbands and belt and the light purple He-Man boots and also furry undies. And then you can see a little bit of the tempo under there of his robotic chest piece. So we'll uh, we'll pop off his little um, harness and have a quick look at that. Okay, so there we have the chest piece off. So you can see the printed, like the old sticker with the uh, robotic chest piece. Um, and this also gives you an indication of just how the um, the figures can come apart. So I'll see if I can pull the... So basically you can pull the figures apart. So you can see that the boots will come off and they can just twist back on. So they, they clip on pretty well. So we just have his torso there, but you can swap the torsos clip the waist back on. You see the dumbbell joint there in the top of the neck. Um, so we can actually, it was easier to get the harness off this way, so you only have to undo this back part. So we clip that back on, and then it's just a matter of making sure we put the right arm in the right socket, but they just click with a very satisfying click um, in there. And then we pop the head Ooh. pop the head on and we uh, split him in half so there is Faker and then let's just see if he holds this actually that uh, that one is much better the, some of the earlier He-Man figures uh, didn't quite hold the sword that well but uh, Faker gets a very good grip on his blade so there we have Faker Okay, so here we have the Lords of Power Merman out of the packet. So there is his blade, the old corn cob uh, sword uh, with the handle. And uh, that's just cast in the one color plastic. And then we have here Merman in that initial concept design with the very intricate armor. We've got the little waist piece We've got the boots with the little sea monkey sort of baubles on them. We've got the fins on the back of the hand. We've got the bones around the back and that amazing face. The uh, uh, I, I'm a real fan of, of this Lords of Power 
style. So that is Merman. So obviously the differences with the exclusive set, uh, well, we'll bring in the exclusive one here and have the two of them together. So you can see straight away, there's a very different color to the green. Uh, the one on the left, the uh, exclusive Lords of Power from PowerCon last year is very much a slightly darker green, a sort of more bluey green um, than this current one. And then you'll notice as well that there are a number of different color paints. So there is a sort of a lighter yellow and then a darker yellow. And then one of the big differences is he has the little sort of scales or bubble pattern on his undies. Um, and he has paint down the center of the sword. Um, but otherwise, it looks like it's the same sculpt. Um, it's just there's a little bit more paint details on the exclusive one. And this is a more orange sort of armor, which matches his face as well. And then he has very bright yellow uh, hands and feet. So you can see the differences between the two. Um, if you have a look at them there, that uh, the two different colors certainly uh, stand out there. So while they are the same figure, uh, it is nice that there is a different sort of paint deco on the more exclusive version. So the final figure in this wave is Evil Lynn. So we have her short staff. Um, so you can see there it's all cast in the one color purple, but it has the orb there with the sort of the clawed hand holding it and the, the short staff. Uh, we have Evil Lynn here. So as I said, this is the same figure as the initial one, just with the sort of paler skin as opposed to the yellow skin. So she's got that skull on the top. She's got some nice little paintwork. She's got the scowl happening there. And then we've got the purple wristbands and coming down. And I don't know if these are the new knees or the old knees. Um, there's, there's still sort of a... a it does look a bit strange on the female figure, but um, let's have a quick look at the articulation just to see whether or not Evil Lynn's any different to the boys. So Evil Lynn, the head is pretty limited because the, uh, the helmet hits the back of her collar there. She can look down a little bit. She can turn left and right. Um, not much bobble or other movement, but uh, just like all the other figures, you can take the head off obviously it has a smaller um, ball joint so uh, you can't put uh, the other male heads on but you can swap her with other female figures so Shira and Teela and the other evil Lynn so we'll put that back on so it has a very skinny ball joint there but that just clicks back on so again arm goes up full rotation bend and twist at the elbow. We've got a bend and twist at the wrist. Waist articulation, no other waist movement. Leg goes out, bends at the knee. I think these are the new, the newer version of the knees. Um, it doesn't quite stick out as much uh, when she bends and then obviously twist and then boot articulation as well. So you can well, you can get her standing better than the classic figure, which was always very hard to get standing up. And then the hands are much gummier, which is good. So she can hold on to the staff quite well. Um, so you could even probably do a, a two-handed um, holding the staff. But again, it's only a short staff. So there is Evil Lynn. So here we have the full wave, um, so it's time now to pick my favourites. Now it's a bit tricky because obviously three of them are effectively just a reissue. Obviously He-Man done in different colours, um, and then obviously um, Eva Lynn herself being in a different colour, and then this is the second Merman, including the um, PowerCon exclusive one. So I think Fisto is going to have to be the number one figure from this particular series 
just because obviously he's a new figure entirely. And then I think I would have to say probably Faker is the second in the series. Uh, Evil Lynn, uh, close third. I do like her in that uh, sort of lighter skin tone. And then uh, I'll just put Merman as the last one. But again, all really good figures. So um, not saying that there's anything wrong with any of them, but that's just uh, my order of preference. Um, so that is the series four, five. I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. Um, that I received from Big Bad Toy Store. So uh, hopefully there is some more coming, including Series 2 with uh, Trapjaw and Orko and uh, Scareglow. So looking forward to those ones arriving. 